Sri Sai Ram. Beloved Bhagwan, we offer our humble pranams at your lotus feet. Today, we the youth and Balvikas children from West Bengal are here to present before you an Rityanjali based on songs of the Nobel laureate Rabindranath Tikhon. Sri Sai Ram, beloved Swami, we the youths from West Bengal offer our most humble pranams at thy lotus feet. Bhagwan, we feel extremely privileged to have this opportunity to present a drama entitled Sambhavami Yuge Yuge. This person seems to be completely insane. Why should he otherwise talk to me like this? Thakur, have you seen God? Yes, Noreen. I have seen God. I see him as I see you here. Even more clearly, Noreen. And not only that, I also talk to him. Just as I'm talking to you. But Thakur, can everyone see God? Yes, Ramlal. But, but who cares for God? People shed torrents of tears for their wives, children, wealth, property. But, but who weeps for the vision of God? Narendra was astounded. For the first time, he was face to face with a man who asserted from the depths of an inner experience that he had seen God. He returned home rather puzzled in mind, only to come back to the master after a few days. Oh, Noreen! At last, at last we have come after so long. You know how many times I have prayed to my mother for bringing you to me. Come, come Noreen, sit, sit here. What is it? What is happening to me, Thakur? What is happening? This wall, this floor, this cot, everything is whirling around me. I'm losing myself. I'm losing myself, Thakur. I'm losing myself. The whole universe, myself, everything is merging into an all-encompassing mysterious void. I am afraid. I'm frightened. Thakur? Thakur, I'm facing death. What is this you are doing to me? Do you know? I have my parents at home. All right. All right. Let it cease now. Everything would come in time. Joy Ma, Joy Ma, Joy Ma, 
Jaima. What could it possibly be? It came and went at the mere wish of this wonderful man. It cannot be mesmerism or hypnotism because because I am not weak. I am I am strong. I am very strong. Thakur, what is Vaishnavism? This path enjoins upon its followers the practice of three things: relishing the name of God, service to the devotees, and compassion for all living creatures. Compassion. Compassion for creatures. Thou fool. Thou art an insignificant worm crawling on earth to show compassion on others. Who, who are you to show compassion to others? No, 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 no. Not compassion to jivas. Not compassion to jivas. But, but service to them as Shiva. Service to them as Shiva. Shivogya ne jive Shiva. Shivogya ne jive Shiva. Joy ma, joy ma, joy ma, joy ma. What a strange light I have discovered in those wonderful words of the Master. Shivogya ne jivo Shiva. Service to Jiva as Shiva. How beautifully he has reconciled the ideal of bhakti with the knowledge of the Vedanta. If it be the will of the Lord, the day will soon come when I shall proclaim this grand truth before the world at large. I shall make it the common property of all, the wise and the unwise, the rich and the poor, the Brahmin and the Pariha. On August 16th, 1886, Sri Ramakrishna took Mahasamadhi. After the death of the Master, his disciples of the first order renounced the worldly life and became monks under the leadership of Narendranath as wished by Sri Ramakrishna. As a wandering monk, Narendranath toured the length and breadth of India for five years. He assumed the name of Swami Vivekananda, which was suggested by Maharaja of Khethri. After getting a first-hand account of India's condition and the diverse religious traditions, he developed sympathy for the suffering masses out of poverty and resolved to uplift the nation. He witnessed that his countrymen under the influence of the West were losing their individuality and national identity. This made him gift the Swadesh Mantra to people of this land. Thou brave one, be bold, take courage, be proud that thou art an Indian and proudly proclaim, I am an Indian, every Indian is my brother. Say, the ignorant Indian, the poor and destitute Indian, the Brahmin Indian, the Pariha Indian is my brother. Say, brother, the soil of India is my highest heaven, the good of India is my good. And repeat and pray day and night, O oh, the Lord of Gauri, O oh, the Mother of the Universe, vouchsafe manliness unto me. O oh, the Mother of Strength, take away my weaknesses, take away my unmanliness, and make me a man. You have stirred Europe and America with your lectures, but coming back here, you have kept silence. What good will lectures do in a country like India, where men are emaciated through starvation and weak in mind? Until you pacify this, until you remove this evil of hunger and starvation, this constant anxiety for bare existence, lectures and such things will be of no benefit. How then would India rise? What should we do then to remove that evil? First, some young men full of spirit of renunciation are needed. Those who will be ready to sacrifice their lives for others instead of devoting themselves to their own happiness. And these will be enough to shake the world. But Swamiji, what should be done then? Work. Work incessantly to relieve the miseries of the poor and the downtrodden. Go from village to village and make people understand that mere sitting idly won't do anymore. 
make them understand their real condition, go. And advise them how to improve their own condition and help them in this. If you cannot do this, then fire upon your education and culture and fire upon your studying the Vedas and the Vedanta. But where is that strength in us, Swamiji? How foolish. Put yourself to work and you will find such tremendous power coming to you. Are in nerves with an intelligent brain and the whole world is at your feet. I love you all ever so much, but I wish you all to die working for others. I should rather be glad to see you do that. But then what will happen to those who depend on me? If you are ready to sacrifice your life for others, God will certainly provide some means for them. Never does a doer of good, O oh, my beloved, come to grief. But Swamiji, to work for others requires a good deal of money. And where shall we get that? What do you talk? If you can make your thoughts and words perfectly at one, if you can make yourself one in speech and action, money will pour at your feet of itself like water. To start with, why not do as much as lies within your power? Even if you cannot give to others for want of money, surely you can at least breathe into their ears some good words or impart some good instruction. Can't you? Or does that also require money? But Swamiji, can we attain salvation this way? What will you do with individual salvation? This is sheer selfishness. Throw aside your meditation, throw away your salvation and such things. I will go into a thousand hells cheerfully if I can rouse my countrymen immersed in Tamas to stand on their own feet and be men inspired with the spirit of Karma Yoga. Put your whole heart and soul in the work to which I have consecrated myself. Go, go all of you, wherever the people are in distress and mitigate their sufferings. On July, the future hopes of a country. I feel extreme pain to see you leading the life of inaction. Set yourself to work. To work! Do not tarry. The time of death is approaching day by day. Do not sit idle thinking that everything will be done in time later on. Mind, nothing will be done that way. Jai 